Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Laurie Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is 5.30 in the morning, Calgary, Alberta time, uh, Monday, February the 15th, and it's a holiday, so I'm not sure how many people will be up listening to this, but I'm deci- I decided to keep the same time and get up and, and do the show. Uh, this is one child abuse survivor to another. Um, you know, I just, uh, I'm just happy to be here, and I just think this is so important, so that's why I'm up early. I'm off today, uh, but I, you know, I just wanted to do the show and then get on with the day, and I, do, I have a busy day sort of set up for myself. So, yeah, I'm glad that you're here, and um, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate the support. Uh, we were talking Friday morning, um, uh, an article I found on long-term consequences of child abuse and neglect. And this is a, a, a quite an informative article. It's from Child Welfare Information Gateway, and that can be found at www.childwelfare.gov. And they have some great information on that website. I really like that website. I, I'm, I'm a, like a fan on there. I have them as a fan page on Facebook, and I also um, subscribe to their emails that come into my email bot, my, my inbox all the time. And so the information is good. This article, however, was written in April 2008. It's a fact sheet, so the the, uh, the statistics are changed, of course, but the information is still really good about long-term consequences of child abuse and neglect. So that's what we're going to talk about for about the next 15 minutes. This is a live internet streaming uh, radio broadcast going over the internet from blogtalkradio.com. And uh, uh, this is not a professional show. It's not, I don't have any professional counseling certificates or or therapist certificates. I'm, I'm not a therapist or a counselor. I'm just a person who sits on blog talk radio. I am an advocate for child rights and uh, um, I am a, a promoter of awareness and prevention and education regarding child abuse and uh, and all human rights abuses really. And I think it's all it's really all uh, it's up to us to 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 stand up and say no, we need to stop child abuse. We need to stop human rights abuses. If we don't all stand up, then it's not going to happen. Uh, we really need everyone's voice, and um, that's why I thought, you know, I'm in between courses at MRU here in Calgary, and I thought, you know, I'm taking some time off, and I thought, you know, I need, uh, I want to be a, one more voice to add to all the voices that are out there speaking out against abuse, and uh, this is one child abuse survivor to another, so, you know, I grew up in an abusive home. I know what it's like to suffer through uh, for, for many years, um, dealing with the, with the with the long-term consequences of child abuse and neglect. So that's why I thought, you know, we could talk about that uh, this week and, and we'll just go from there. But this show, you know, it, it, the topics are very sensitive. And so if, you're ha- if you think this, this topic will, will cause you to be uncomfortable or trigger you, uh, please don't listen to the show. Just turn it off. You have to listen at your own discretion. Uh, you know, that's my disclaimer because... You know, I don't. I don't know what's going to affect a person when they listen to the show. It depends on where you know your frame of mind and how you're doing, especially in your healing. If you're healing from child abuse, so you want to make sure that you you're safe. You're in a good place when you listen to this show. And um, if it's really going to bother you, just turn it off. It's your choice. Also, if you're a young person under the age of 18 or young younger than that, make sure you have someone to, that that can help you. Like sort of answer questions for you. Um, of some of the topics that we cover, uh, almost everything I cover re- deals with abuse of some to- of some kind, and so and the issues surrounding it. So you want to make sure that you have someone listen to it with you, maybe a counselor, or someone at school that you trust, a teacher, or uh, you know a neighbor who's really trustworthy, or a parent if you have a parent who's available who cares about what you're listening to, which so often is not the case. But if you have someone in your life, <clears throat> you know someone who who you trust who will listen to this show with you, that would be great because then they can kind of help you with uh, if, if you have questions or they can help you, uh, you know, find the answers on the Internet. And because uh, it's so important. I don't want anybody to be upset by the show. And really it's all about education, uh, prevention, and awareness regarding child abuse and all surrounding issues. And so, yeah, but I'm glad you're here. <clears throat> and we'll just get started right away. <clears throat> I'm just waking up so my voice is really bad. Sorry about that. Um, Friday morning, we covered the factors affecting the consequences of child abuse, and uh, this article is great. They they go through and they they sort of uh, take a look at, at what are the long term consequences, right? And they said that you know depending on the the individual cases vary widely because it just depends on the combination of factors, including things like the child's age and developmental status when the 
when the abuse or the ne neglect occurred, I'm just reading right from their page here, uh, the type of abuse, which, you know, physical abuse, neglect, sexual abuse, etc., the frequency, duration, and severity of the abuse, and also the relationship between the victim and his or her abuser. So there's many uh, sort of factors that, uh, that, that, you know, combined that make everyone's case very much an individual case. And even though, you know, I'm, I grew up in an abusive home and I suffered uh, abuse uh, just all, all all kinds of abuse. Um, there's so many people out there suffering from child abuse, and they, you know, they're walking through their healing, and we're all different, but yet we all share the common factor, and that that's, you know, there was a, a we had to deal with a lot of pain and a lot of um, problems that afterwards that we've had to pick up the pieces and, and heal from, and so there, you know, we're all sort of in the same boat there, and. It's great to find some support, you know. You want to get into a support group or if you're dealing with this and you want to make sure you reach out to someone who you trust and it's hard to find people that you can trust. But if you reach out, I found that as I started reaching out, people started reaching out to me. And so I got onto some of these 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 groups, you know, there's uh, child abuse survivors, child abuse survivors, a, a safe place for survivors and supporters. Um, there's also groups like the Purple Phoenix for women, uh, faith-based he healing group, and um, there's uh, Linda Lee's uh, two groups, uh, Stop Child Abuse and uh, Stop Child Abuse Women Only. And there's a within that there's a um, I don't know 28 different groups that you can belong to, because the people you know it's great to reach out and ta find someone who's who's dealt with the similar things that you have, because they can really help you. So we're going to read on here, physical health consequences. That was the next uh, piece of this article that came up at www.childwelfare.gov. And I'm just reading right from their page, it's number, page number three of this article. Physical health consequences. The immediate physical effects of abuse or neglect can be relatively minor, bruises or cuts or severe broken bones, hemorrhage or even death. In some cases, the physical effects are temporary. However, the pain and suffering they cause a child should not be discounted. Meanwhile, the long-term impact of child abuse and neglect on physical health is just beginning to be explored. According to the National Survey of Child and Adolescent Well-Being, uh, the NSCAW, more than one quarter of children who had been in foster care for longer than 12 months had some lasting or recurring health health problem. That's from the Administration for Children and Families Office of Planning, Research, and Evaluation. Um, and this is a sort of old information from 2008, um, and, so, and the stuff that they're quoting on the inside of the article here is from 2004. So, you know, the statistics have changed. <clears throat> but we all know that this is a, it's still very much uh, the case and uh, just the numbers would be different, that's all, right? And it says, below are some outcomes researchers have identified. Shaken baby syndrome, that we're going to look at that. Uh, impaired brain development. There's also things, uh, there's poor physical health. And then psychological consequences. So we'll, we'll read uh, shaken baby syndrome. Shaking a baby is a common form of child abuse. The injuries caused by shaking a baby may not be immediately noticeable and may include bleeding in the eye or brain, uh, damage to the spinal cord and neck and rib or bone fractures, uh, and things like that. And they, they list uh, impaired brain development. Child abuse and neglect have been shown in some cases to cause important regions of the brain to fail to form or grow properly, resulting in re uh, impaired development. Uh, these alterations in brain uh, mature, mat, maturation have long-term consequences for cognitive language and academic abilities. And uh, it says here uh, the NSCAW uh, they found more than three quarters of foster children between one and two years of age to be at medium or high risk for problems with brain development, as opposed to less than half of children in a control sample. So there's um, three quarters of children in foster care between, that's a lot, that's a three-fourths, you know, um, of children between the age of one and two are at high risk for having uh, impaired brain development. So it really has an effect on children. Uh, poor physical health. Sever several studies have shown a relationship between various forms of household dysfunction, including child abuse and poor health. Uh, ad adults who experienced abuse or neglect during childhood are more likely to suffer from physical ailments such as allergies, arthritis, asthma, bronchitis, high blood pressure, and ulcers. And there's probably many reasons for that. Uh, they don't list them off. You know, we can go into that further. We can uh, get look for more information regarding that, right? Uh, psychological consequences. The immediate emotional effects of abuse and neglect, isolation, fear, and, and inability to trust, 
can translate into lifelong consequences, including low self-esteem, depression, and relationship difficulties. Uh, researchers have identified links between child abuse and neglect and the following, uh, which is d- difficulties during infancy, poor mental and emotional health, cognitive uh, difficulties, uh, social difficulties. So we'll read uh, difficulties during infancy. Depression and withdrawal symptoms were common among children as young as three who experienced emotional, physical, or environmental neglect. And uh, poor mental and emotional health. In one long-term study, as many as 80% of young adults who had been abused met the diagnostic criteria for at least one psychiatric disorder at age 21. These young adults exhibited many problems, including depression, anxiety, eating disorders, and suicide attempts. Other psychological and uh, emotional conditions associated with abuse and neglect include uh, panic disorder, dissociative disorders, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, depression, anger, post-traumatic stress disorder, and reactive attachment disorder. And that was from Teacher uh, 2000, DeBellis and Thomas 2003. So they've got their resources and references there. And cognitive difficulties. The NC, uh, NSCAW found that children placed in out-of-home care due to abuse or neglect tend to, to score lower than the general population on measures of cognitive capacity, language development, and academic achievement. Um, it says uh, a 1999 long-scan study also found a relationship between substantiated child maltreatment and poor academic performance in classroom functioning for school-aged children. So that, you know, kind of all sort of have an effect on the child's ability to learn, psychological consequences, you know, uh, dealing with depression and, and, and eating disorders, panic disorder and everything else like that, right? Uh, social difficulties. Children who experience rejection or neglect are more likely to develop antisocial traits as they grow up. Parental neglect is also associated with borderline personality disorders and violent behavior. And, you know, um, it's no wonder. I, I know growing up in my home, I had a lot of social uh, difficulties growing up and you know kids like kids would want to come and play with me and I generally end up pushing them away and if 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 a little kid who you know it didn't matter whether they were bigger than me or smaller than me if they if they did something to me that I didn't like I'd chase them down and beat them up because that's what I was used to having done to me at home you know and so I was just mirroring what my mom was doing to me and um yeah you know if some if a kid was playing with one of my toys or something and and uh I didn't like it, then I generally, instead of just asking for my toy back, I would beat them up, and so, and then my mom would would find out, and then I'd and then I'd get a beating. So, um, you know, it was really just bad, and uh, it, it's such a huge issue, and and then you know, dealing with the long term effects of it can just be crazy, um, and it's so hard. And just know that you're not alone out there if you've suffered with. Uh, child abuse. You're not alone. There's tons and tons of group and so uh, there's groups and support. There, there's professional help, which I do suggest. Um, you know, I should have had professional help a long time ago. And you know, eventually down the road, I, at some point, I might seek professional uh, counseling. It, uh, just a nice counselor would be really good to have. A uh, therapist, you know. Well, tomorrow we're going to look at behavioral consequences and. Uh, we're going to look at societal consequences if we have time, and that'll be tomorrow morning. So we've got about a minute left. Uh, the P. Luna Foundation, that's www.plunafoundation.com, is a voice for the children and a mission. Uh, the P. Luna Foundation fights the child abuse by creating innovative programs to educate, aid law enforcement, and build awareness about the growing epidemic of child abuse and exploitation. That's a great website, uh, the Petra Luna Foundation. She's awesome, and she's got a war on child abuse, and I just love her. Points with Purpose, www.pointswithpurpose.com for female and male survivors, survivors and supporters. That's a great website. Men and Resources, too, Resources for Male and Female Victims. This is John Schmidt's uh, Facebook um, group. You can get on there. He's got some great information. Men are Survivors, too, Resources for Male and Female Victims. Um, there is uh, there is uh, Linda Lee's groups, and, and those you can find at uh, HTTP uh, forward slash forward slash just type into your browser lindalee.ning.com and you can bring up Stop Child Abuse and Stop Child Abuse Women Only. Those are some great groups. It's healtofeel.com and uh, you, there, you can find all kinds of resources. Uh, it's a place to heal. There's poetry and writing and just great stuff on there. I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dreamcatchers for Abused Children and I'm so happy to stand with them. Check out their website. Just type right into your browser Dreamcatchers for Abused Children, and it'll come right up there. Um, they have some great information on there. It's a wonderful website. 
and I hope that you will utilize it. There's a free uh, child abuse handbook, a PDF download written by Donna Shear, the president of Dreamcatchers for Abused Children, author and president, and also uh, Sandra Potter, CEO and founder of Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. So everyone have a great day. Take care. My heart is with you all, and I hope to see you back here tonight. I'll be back on at 9.30. Take care, everybody.